Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. Make sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe, and leave an obligatory supportive comment down below. Woke up with a bit of a sore throat this morning. Just popped a vitamin D and a vitamin C and a vitamin B just for fun. Um, that's usually the name of the game for me when I get sick. Um, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know if I'm like different or something. I don't ever talk to people about this, but it's like, if I get sick, I don't like rush to the hospital and find out exactly what it is. If I get sick, all I know is one, I'm not going outside Two, I'm drinking like a gallon of water a day. Three, I'm popping a bunch of vitamins as much as I can. And those little emergency packets where, like, you put them in, like, vitamin C, drop into a bottle of water, shake it up, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Like, what do you guys do? When you get sick, do you, you rush to the doctor and, like, immediately try to get prescribed something and find out what it is? Or are you just like me where it's just, like, water and vitamins and relax? I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. We got James K. Fillin at Fillin Law from two hours ago. We got scheduling update as of September 6th, 2022. Got some upcoming dates uh, with the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. One thing that he does state at the beginning, though, is that there are still many disputes that are in the process of being briefed. First one, motions to exclude expert testimony. Motions to exclude expert testimony, Daubert challenges, were filed under seal on July 12, 2022. But disputes regarding sealing the motions and the expert reports and deposition transcripts remain. On July 22nd, 2022, the parties filed their respective motions to seal the motions to exclude expert testimony. And on July 25th, 2022, the parties responded to each other's motions to seal. The substantive oppositions to the motions to exclude expert testimony were filed on August 9th, 2022. And the replies to the opposition were filed on August 30th, 2022. The motions to seal portions of the oppositions have already been fully briefed, but any motions to seal portions of the exclusion motion replies must be filed by September 9th, 2022. And any response to these motions must be filed by September 16th, 2022. The deliberative process privilege and attorney-client privilege battle over the Hinman documents. The Hinman emails. Always seems like in this world, like we're trying to see somebody's emails. <laughs> I don't know, man. Whether it's freaking Hillary Clinton or Hunter Biden's laptop or William Hemmings emails. Like, I feel like no matter what's going on in the world, you got some group of people wanting to see someone else's emails, bro. That's hilarious, honestly. So, the decision on the SEC's objection is pending. Uh, this matter is fully briefed, and we are awaiting a decision by District Judge Torres and. Considering the SEC has literally been battling Judge Torres, like not even trying to work with her like Ripple, but just outright battling the magistrate judge, or no, I don't think Judge Torres is magistrate, I think it's Judge Netburn. Anyways, point being, the SEC is constantly fighting the judge. Not working with them, but literally fighting them, and I believe on a few occasions, like trying to say that like she was wrong or something, it, like... I think the the judge can pretty much uh, go for vengeance here and just release the Hibbin emails because literally, like, I can't remember how far long ago this was. I, I want to say, like, four or five months, but Ripple, like, just gave all their internal documents to the court. Like, any, you know, emails or documents that were in question by the court, Ripple just handed them over. They didn't even argue. They just handed it over. We're going, look, we're innocent. We don't got anything to hide like the SEC. Right? So, the him and emails, I think they're going to be produced. I think they're going to be produced because that is where the true corruption lies. And once we get those him and emails with very, very minor redactions, hopefully, I think that's where the real fun is going to begin. Deliberative process, privilege appeal, or petition to the Second Circuit. If the SEC loses the privilege issues before District Judge Torres, there is a chance that the SEC would try to file an interlocutory appeal to the Second Circuit. Before they do that, they would have to file a motion for certification of an interlocutory appeal with District Judge Torres. Unfortunately, that takes time. For example, the last time the SEC filed a motion before District Judge Torres in a different case... It took almost 10 weeks from the original ruling until District Judge Torres decided whether to certify the issue for appeal in that case. 
District Judge Torres granted the certification in Rio Tinto, but I don't think she'll grant the certification in the Ripple case. But like everything in this case, it will still take some time to decide. Moreover, even if the SEC loses the certification motion, I do expect the SEC to try to get those issues before the Second Circuit, probably through a petition. Uh, oh, a petition, okay. Uh, for a writ of, mem uh, of mandamus? Mandamus, dude? I don't know, man. Go and throw this Ripple versus SEC lawsuit stuff. I am learning so many new words that I've never even seen in my life. Mandamus. Uh, and that will also take some time to decide. The bottom line is I believe we are a long way from seeing the Hinman documents. Although I cannot predict exactly when, I'm simply saying settle in because it's going to take more time than you want. Motions for summary judgment. Motions for summary judgment and Rule 56.1 statements of undisputed facts must be filed by September 13th, 2022. Oppositions to the motions for summary judgment and responses to the Rule 56.1 statements must be filed by October 18th, 2022. Replies to those must be filed by November 15th, 2022. Note, just like the expert challenge motions, please keep in mind that there will most likely be similar sealing disputes regarding what will be sealed and what will be public in connection with the motions for summary judgment because, you know, heh, SEC doesn't want anything public, right? Even though we're funding them with our tax dollars, which I just got a freaking bill from the IRS like recently for two grand because I didn't submit them one document, dude. I didn't submit them one document, but guess what? A few months ago, they sent me a letter saying, hey, send us over this document. Guess what I did? I sent it right over this the next day, Okay. Then they bill me three months later. Oh, you didn't give this to us. Yes, I freaking did. So I got to, you know, go wait on hold for three hours to try to talk to them about that. Anyways. God, it's just the SEC. I can't believe our, our tax dollars is funding them and they're just being corrupt, hiding shit from us and don't want like anything to be public because they know they're guilty. All right, so. Therefore, it's my expectation that the summary judgment motions will be filed under seal on September 13th, 2022, which is, you know, coming up on the, like the next week here, at least preliminarily until either District Judge Torres works out what can be filed publicly and what will, be, will remain under seal or the parties otherwise agree on the sealing issues. I am sticking to my prediction that District Judge Torres will decide both the expert motions and the summary judgment motions at the same time on or before March 31st, 2023. I have no prediction when the Hinman email dispute will be fully and finally resolved. So, we're going to have to wait a while, guys. I know. Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. Here's the thing, though. One thing I don't want people to do is I don't want people to go, okay, the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit, oh, it's still happening. That means we can't pump. That is... As, like, the, you know, the British would say, that's, like, bollocks, man. That's, that's like, literally bollocks, Okay. Because that's what I don't like seeing is, is I see all over Twitter that, oh, oh, you know what, reverse SEC, you know what, until the case is over, no pump. Do not think like this. Do not think like this. Okay, please. I I've been seeing this so much in comment sections and Twitter replies and main tweets on freaking Reddit. And it's just this like doom and gloom mentality of, Okay, you know what? They're literally impossible. We cannot have a pump unless the SEC lawsuit is over. That's not the case here. No matter how long the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit takes, it's not like the the SEC is some iron wall saying, oh, absolutely, no, you will not have a pump on this date. You cannot do this. No, that's BS, dude. I'm going to prove it to you right now, okay? So this right here, this was the SEC dump. This is what had me sitting on my stairs at 16 cents a coin, nearly tears in my eyes going, oh my God, my portfolio just got wiped out. And you know what I did? I went, okay, if the market's trying to make me cry, if the market's got me sitting in despair on my stairs trying to make me cry, okay, I'm going to throw in 750 bucks into XRP. That's what I did right there, 16 cents. Okay, and then during... During the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit, what happened? Yeah, we pumped to $2 a coin. So please, I know that the Ripple versus SEC case is probably going to take a lot of time. Same with the him and emails. I think we're still going to get them. But we can't have this mentality of, okay, no price action until SEC lawsuit is over. Okay, When the SEC lawsuit is over and finished and settled and XRP is like the first legalized regulatory current, cryptocurrency in the United States, I believe there will be a pump from that. 
but we can't think there's no pump until that point. Okay, because look at all of this. Look at all of this. Okay, let's get to specifics here. During the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit, XRP pumped 800% in about four months. 800% in four months while the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit was still going on. All right, guys. So, yeah, it's just going to take some time. Um, we're going to get there, though. We're going to get there. We're going to see those hidden emails. We're going to expose ETHgate. We're going to make ETHgate a global thing across the world once these emails do get revealed. All right. So, yeah, guys, that's going to be it for the video today. Quick little rant, though. Because, like, I honestly, just like the family guy Peter Griffin grinds my gears, like, I, I, me and my friend do this all the time on FaceTime. We'll, we'll complain to each other for, like, hours about, like, just anything, right? So, today I checked my emails. <laughs> I mean, so, since we're on the topic of freaking Hinman emails, I checked my, my emails today, which I, you know, unfortunately cannot release to the public because I don't think you guys want to see my glorious spam emails I get from all these websites I've signed up to. Um, yeah, so I get an email from the property manager of my apartment this morning. Saying like, hey, uh, you know, the the people that live below you, they messaged us yesterday at 3 in the morning saying there's a noise complaint and like you guys are like stomping around like elephants and this is the, oh, oh quote, oh, oh, the first time this has ever happened. Um, I'm like, okay, I'm sorry you live below me. That's not my problem, <laughs> first of all. So then today I just, you know, the property manager's office is really close to where I live, so I just walk over there, and I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? Like, hey, I just saw this email. Like, I'm not sure what we did. Like, I like, I, I, I mean, what am I freaking doing? Like, playing drums? Like, no. And then um, the property manager actually tells me. She says that, yeah, hey, actually, like, like, I know you guys were just up there, like, walking around, you know? So I, like, it is basically the property manager was telling me just like, like, yeah, all you're doing is just walking around. Like, you're just living at, you know, 3 a.m. Like, that's your right to do that. You can go walk around your apartment at 3 a.m. And the property manager just told me that, like, yeah, I mean, I didn't even want to send you the complaint message. But, like, I, part of my job, I just have to let you know that the people below you are complaining just in case they want to come upstairs and start a problem or something. But I'm literally just walking, dude. I'm freaking walking. Like, what, I can't walk? All right. I mean, it's like you live below me. Like, OK, well, that sucks. That's not my problem. That sounds like a you problem. OK, so anyways, I mean, I know I'm kind of a night crawler. I'm up late at night, three in the morning, like 12, 12 a.m. and stuff like that. But but dude, I'm just walking like I'm literally just walking. I, I, what do I do? Get up out of bed, walk to the kitchen, make some food, maybe go downstairs, pick up a DoorDash or something. Come on the computer, you know, play some Rust, make some YouTube videos, write some articles. And they're complaining about my walking. I'm just walking, dude. Because, see, in all the apartments I've lived in, which has, you know, only been two, never been the loud neighbor guy. I've never been the, you know, bring over a bunch of people, throw parties. Never been blasting music, playing drum, playing guitar. No, I sit with my headphones. I game, I do my work. And that's it, all right? That's a wrap. But I literally, the people below me are complaining about my walking, okay? I'm a freaking 160 pound, 5 foot 11 American kid. Like, you really think my steps are making that much noise? It's like, come on, dude, take a melatonin, pop a melatonin, put on some headphones, go to sleep. Not my problem. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.